Yo, 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 yo. What's good with it, man? It's the homie Mac. Music, art, culture, knowledge. Reporting live from the Dogon. Dogon, Dogon, each one teach one, each one teach one, peace and love. Um, hope all is well with everybody. I hope everybody's uh, staying on their purpose, staying on their grind. Uh, being good to themselves, loving themselves. Um, being kind to themselves. Um, and being kind to others. But anyway, this is a session of Mackin' with Mac. You like how I do that? Mackin' with Mac. A uh, book review series. Um, <clears throat> today, I will um, be reviewing the book, I Am Raymond Washington. See it? Can you see it? I Am Raymond Washington. Uh, by Zach Fortier. Or Fortier. I'm not sure how to pronounce his name exactly. Uh, published by Steel Shark Press. Um, also, this book, uh, uh, it actually won an award uh, from Street Creds. And uh, this book was written in concert with Gerard Bar Barton. Gerard Barton was actually uh, Raymond Washington's little brother. So, let's get to it. Who is Raymond Washington? Raymond Washington was uh, the founders of the Crips, the gang, the gang, or I don't even want to say gang. Let me say organization, <laughs> the Crips. Um, the thing that I like about this book a lot is uh, the writing style. It's very, it, it's very, uh, it's educational, but it's not preachy. Um, I feel like he he gives a, a Mr. Fortier. He get in his book. He gives a very um, balanced. He gives a very balanced and objective view of Raymond Washington. Uh, doesn't paint him out to be a saint, but doesn't paint him out to be a demon either. He weighs. He puts the good next to the bad. He juxtaposes the two together and, and lets you draw the conclusion. Um, this book. A lot. A lot of the things in this book. I mean, if you know me, you know. Uh, I, I lived in California, spent some time in California. I frequent California a lot. And, um, you know, being someone who, who consistently visits California, I always consider California like my playground. I just like, I like to go. Uh, but anyway, um, you know, as much as I've visited California, I, get, I have been exposed to the ethos or the, just the culture uh, that is California. Um, and it doesn't tell... The, the 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 history of, of uh, organizations, specifically the Crips. So a lot of things in this book I was already kind of introduced to, but I feel like this book kind of went in greater detail. Um, but yeah, this book starts off uh, pretty much documenting Raymond Washington's adolescence. Uh, it starts off in the Rots riots. Um, no, Watts. I said Rots riots. It starts off in the Watts riots. Uh, this took place like in the '60s, and it just talks about how. Uh, Raymond, uh, you know, he got hit, uh, went, went to a store. Mind just riots, haywire, a lot of looting, a lot of stuff is going on. I guess he went to a sporting goods store, uh, took some uh, basketballs, took different uh, sports equipment. And uh, Derard, you know, his little brother Derard, he, he, he looked at Raymond Washington as being like this superhero. Like whatever he wanted to will to happen, he could will it into existence. Um... The, the thing that I thought was really interesting was I never knew that Raymond Washington wanted to be a part of another organization called the Avenues. The Avenues was fun, uh, founded by uh, none other than Craig Munson. Craig Munson was a bodybuilder, a weightlifter. Um, yeah, the, the Avenues were essentially the precursor to the Crips. But yeah, so um, mind you, at this time, Raymond's like 15, 16 years old. He's a student at Fremont High School. Um, the, what was it, the, uh, the Avenue, and I know, I know my homies from Cali are watching, I'm not big on streets, and the geography and everything, but I can give y'all a broad, <laughs> a broad understanding of what's going on, um, as far as geography. Uh, the, av the avenues were like on 84th and Hopper, I'm not sure exactly where, this is on the east side of Los Angeles, uh, Trying to think, uh, Raymond, 
uh, essentially wanted to be again wanted to be down with the avenues. Uh, Craig Munson and his homies were not feeling it, and uh, they rejected Raymond. So again, Raymond's like 15, 16 years old. Him and a, uh, another young man by the name of Craig Craddock started the Crips. Now, a lot of times people, the, the way a lot of times this whole thing is pontificated or explained is just like Raymond started the Crips alongside Tookie Williams. Tookie Williams was not a Crip co-founder. Tookie Williams essentially was uh, an ambassador or someone who uh, started an extension of the Crips. He start, Raymond Washington and Craig Craddock Craddock were on the east side of L.A. Raymond Washington um, was pretty much p petitioned or tasked to uh, set the west side Crips in motion. So he, he joined a machine that was already um, in movement. So no, Tookie was not a founder. I, th I think a lot of people believe that. But anyway, um, yeah, so uh, let me get back on track. Uh, Raymond Washington and Craig Craddock, they started the Crips. Uh, they were students at Fremont High School. In Los Angeles, um, let's see, Craig, uh, Raymond and Craig uh, started started the Crips. They used to they they would have meetings on the bleachers at Fremont High School. They would meet at different times. Um, and interestingly enough, Craig Craddock was actually influenced by the Black Panthers. Uh, Raymond Washington as well. Uh, uh, this book even speaks to how they used to they would eat. Um, at the free breakfast program, the, the different the free, the free breakfast program that the Panthers had, they would eat breakfast. Um, just the different programs that the Panthers had uh, to socialize black people, disenfranchise people, give them a social and political education. Uh, Craig Craddock and Raymond Washington were beneficiaries of that. Um, so when they started the Crips, there was very much a Black Panther influence by proxy. Um, now, we know Bunchy Carter, who was a very prominent Black Panther in L.A., he was murdered. We know about COINTELPRO. We know how uh, the Black Panthers were systemically disassembled. And this left a void or a vacuum. Um, and it's like, uh, you know, a lot of the, the people, a lot of the young black men and, and black women during that time, they were trying to find something to attach to. And I just think it was like a perfect storm uh, for the Crips to insert themselves and um, make it do what it do. Um, interestingly enough, uh, Raymond Washington was a fighter. They said that, that uh, he had a gym in his backyard with like boxing with uh, with weights. Uh, uh, what is it? Boxing bags. Um, it was just like he had like a, a gladiator training school in his backyard. You know, again, he was big on weightlifting, and his whole thing was. I want to be so so much of a specimen, specimen, and so strong. I want to be able to knock you out. I don't want to do this whole back and forth. I want to be so strong where I could just lay you out. And the thing that I thought I thought was really interesting, um, I realize now, the the thing that was essentially the the I guess the the, the what's the word I'm looking for um, the impetus. Or like the, yeah, the, the thing that served as the impetus or motivation for a lot of the Crips to be the best Crip they could be in their Cripping was uh, the competition amongst one another. Like Raymond Washington, um, he was essentially just trying to be, I don't want to say he was trying to be Craig Munson, but he was influenced by Craig Munson. Tookie was influenced by Craig Munson. And, um... Later on, Monster Cody, you know Monster Cody, uh, he was trying to imitate Tookie and, and Raymond. So there was this peer pressure to just go hard with your cripping and be as solid and solidified as you could be. Um, this book outlines his childhood, that is Raymond Washington. It even talks about how uh, the Crips, uh, how the Crips got their footing or solidified themselves, like. Um, Raymond would go to different neighborhoods throughout L.A. Now, mind you, Raymond was a, specialist, a, uh, a specimen. He lifted weights. He was very disciplined. And, um, and he would, I mean, he liked to fight. He was a fighter. So he would go to different neighborhoods, and um, he'd be like, look, um, we're going to fight. I'm, I want to fight the leader of your gang. 
if I beat his ass, you have to capitulate and become Crips. So they have these one-on-one -on -one fights, and Raymond would get the best of them, and then that whole gang had to become a Crip set. They became Crips. They were absorbed. They were, I don't, I don't, they didn't even have sets at that time. This was before the formulation of sets. It was more, it was more so East Side Crips, West Side Crips. Geography made the distinction, but there were there were no like eight tray gangsters or rolling sixties or uh, four tray gangsters or uh, you know Ho Hoovers before they became criminals. I know some of the Hoover, I think five dudes Hoovers still, still crip. But the point I'm trying to make is um, these these organizations um, there were no sets. It was just one foundation, cripping. That's what everything was. We were, we were crips. It wasn't there? There was no individual individualized social phenomenon with the sets but anyway um yeah so as the as the crips became more assertive and built up their foundation um it got to the point where raymond and, raymond and tookie would just go different places and they say hey is it crip or what some people would just they would concede okay we're gonna be crips some people would fight um and they would get laid out, and they would, they would become Crips. Um, now, from different brothers I've talked to from L.A., um, one of the rumors that I've heard were like, I mean, essentially, a lot of the the, the Piru blood sets, the non-Crip sets that are black, the, the non-Crip gangs that exist in L.A. today that had foundations in the 70s, the, the late 60s, 70s, that still exist today, what you see are the gangs that successfully resisted Raymond, that successfully resisted Tookie. Um, like, for example, I want to say uh, Tookie went to Athens Park. I can't remember the name of the brother that laid him out. But he, he came up as a crip or what? Brother uh, from Athens Park was saying, pretty much was like, no, nah, I'm not with it. Laid him out in the middle of Athens Park. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I've heard this from numerous sources. Um, yeah, uh, the thing that I like about this book, uh, it just really gives you an in-depth analysis of the psychology of Raymond Washington. A uh, dude was a leader. Um, he, they, uh, uh, when he would go to different crip sets, well, not crip sets. When he would go to different <laughs> factions of the crips, um, based on geography. So when he would go to different places where the crips were, uh, they would greet him as Raymond Washington, our righteous leader. That says a lot, that people looked at him as a righteous leader, that he was able to create or foment an a, a ethos, a whole infrastructure that a lot of brothers would buy into. And they wanted Crippen to be at the highest point, and just to, to, to represent. Um, what else? Uh, trying to think. There's so many things I highlighted in this book. Um... A lot of people looked at Raymond Washington as like a Robin Hood like figure. How, you know, he would he would pretty much take from the rich, give it to the poor, or just protect the community. You know, the Crippen was not fashioned uh to be anti black. It was not necessarily initially fashioned to be destructive to black people. It was essentially supposed to be uh I guess carrying on the legacy of the Panthers. But you know, when you when you factor in uh drugs and greed and ego, I feel like Crippen, it just went out of orbit from its original intentions. Like, uh, in this book, they talk about how uh, Raymond was actually incarcerated, and his whole thing was, yeah, dudes got guns, they got pistols, but it's not about that, it's about these. I'm going to lay a dude out. And he didn't like the use of guns, but when he came out of prison, he noticed, like, dang, like this Crippen is, is totally evolved into something that I didn't intend for it to be. You know, drug trade got in it, got, you know, the, the, the drug trade became a, a dynamic and there was more violence as far as firearms. Raymond didn't intend for it to be that, uh, to become that. So I guess in some ways in his mind it devolved, not evolved, but devolved from its, devolved from its original purpose. Um, the thing that I respect about Raymond is, uh, he he was able to instill a sense of self-worth and confidence in people. <laughs> you know? Like, he got people to, to, to buy into his vision. Um, a lot of times it was by force, but a lot of times it was also by persuasion. 
and uh, him him just I think him being familiar with whom human psychology and um, just how to motivate people. Um, I think one thing that was interesting. I think it's chapter yeah chapter eleven. Raymond goes to prison. It talks about how when he went to prison, how he came in cripping, and you had the black gorilla family that was already there. You had the Aryan Brotherhood, uh, Mexican Mafia, and even in that hostile place, um, Raymond was able to recruit new Crips. I mean, Raymond from, um, I'm trying to remember if, the, if it's in the book or someone told me this. Raymond actually got shanked while he was in prison. But he was able to, to solidify a presence, and, they, and there, a lot of Crips were made in prison. I mean, he was beefing with the BGF, Black Gorilla Family. Uh, a, member of the Black, a member of the Black Gorilla Family actually killed Huey Newton. Uh, and and Raymond, and this, that's a testament to his will and his strength that he was able to navigate through all that and still do his thing. Um, yeah, it actually was in this book. Hold up. Raymond got jumped by the Black Gorilla family in Tracy and was stabbed in an altercation that took place. Raymond was reported to have gone crazy and responded by terrorizing his adversaries. Harrington continued, as soon as Raymond arrived at Tracy Prison, there was friction between the North and Northern and Southern Blacks. Raymond was a very strong leader, daring and persistent. I remember one day we were all in the softball field in Tracy, and the Black Gorilla family, Black Gorilla family was out to get Raymond. But he didn't care. He stood there and recruited Crips right there in the yard in full view of the Black Gorilla family. Do you know how much <laughs> courage and persuasiveness it would take to do that? Um, but yeah, a lot of Crips were made in prison. Uh... One thing I like about this book, how it, it pretty much debunks a lot of myths. I'm going to read, read some of them. Okay. The Crips started out as the Baby Avenue Cribs. False. The Crips, gained the, name, the Crips gained the name The Crips after a senior gang member was shot in the leg and later always walked with a limp. False. 